even simple meditation, 15 minutes twice a day, can cut back on, can significantly cut in half the amount of hot flashes a woman has. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome to a special episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. That's pharmacy with an F, F A R M A C Y, a place for conversations that matter. And if you've had any hormone issues, whether it's menstrual issues or menopause or perimenopause or bad pap tests or anything, this is the podcast you should listen to. It's with my colleague and friend uh, and partner at the Ultra Wellness Center, Dr. Elizabeth Boham, and she's joining us on today's special episode of House Call on The Doctor's Pharmacy. And She's an incredible doctor. She's had struggles with herself with hormone issues and breast cancer. So she knows a lot about this and we focus on chronic diseases that nobody else can figure out and get people better when nobody else can using a very different model of care called functional medicine. So I'm super excited to have you here, Liz. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. All right, let's get into it. Um, How prevalent are hormone imbalances for women? Oh man, I mean, when when I see a woman, you know, so often we're dealing with hormone imbalances. They're so prevalent. You know, everything from, as you mentioned, PMS to uh, w- you know to uh, issues with menopause and perimenopause to issues with estrogen dominance, right, or over over levels of estrogen, high levels of estrogen in the body, which can lead to breast tenderness or more PMS or um, uh, cancers like uterine cancer and breast cancer. And fluid retention and heavy bleeding. That too, And yes. all kinds of nasty symptoms. Yeah, so Emotional hormones are- Emotional swings and mood yes. issues. And- So we're really thinking about hormones and hormone balance when anybody comes into the office. So, I mean, that's something, I think that that's an area. And it's so common, right? 75% of women suffer from PMS. (laughs) How is that normal? That's not a normal state of biology. It's an abnormal state. Right. Just because it's so common doesn't mean it's actually optimal, right? Absolutely. So then we need to ask that question, why? Why are the hormones out of balance? And we look at everything from how is the body metabolizing the hormones? How is the um, microbiome and how is that influencing it? Um, how is the person dealing with stress and is that influencing the hormone balance? Yeah. Um, so, w- you know, you want to look at look at the whole body when you're trying to figure out what may be out of balance with somebody's hormones. Even fertility issues. I mean, Oh, that's, I, it's know, getting I, so common, it's right? It's so common, you know, affects so one out of seven couples, and mm-hmm. it's a big. And and so when you go to a regular doctor and you have these, you know, symptoms of PMS or heavy bleeding or, you know, menopause, like what do they do? So often they'll say, okay, I'm gonna put you on birth control pills. Oh yeah. Right, right, like if with, with PMS, and or regular cycles or perimenopause, that is the common response. You know, is let's just start some birth control pills that and that's safe? gonna even everything out. Is that safe? I don't know. I mean, it's a good question, right? I mean, there's there are side effects to birth control pills. You know, we see we see we see stroke and blood clots with some women with birth control pills. Yeast um, infections, affects the microbiome. Absolutely. There's some <laughs> There's some women where um, we know that the longer you've been on birth control pills, or if you're on them more than 10 years, or if you're, you know, your risk for breast cancer goes up. So there is an association with long-term use of birth control pills. Or just breast cancer. Just breast cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is interesting. So you take the pill for a long time, and your risk of breast cancer goes up. Yeah. For women, when they're on the birth control pill, or if they've been on it a long time, they have a slightly higher risk. Mm. And... um, you know, so that's something we got to pay attention to. Not everybody handles the hormones in the birth control pills the right. same. So not, not everybody is being prescribed birth control for birth control. They're using it right. as a medical therapy for hormone imbalances when there's a very different way of treating it. Absolutely. That works better, yep. where the women feel better, and their yep. hormones get imbalanced without nasty side effects of stroke and cancer. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you really want to ask- migraines and who knows what else. Right, migraines right? too, absolutely. So you want to ask, well, why is there that imbalance in the hormones and, and what may be out of balance for that woman? You know, I think perimenopause is such an interesting time where we get a lot of women who come in to the office at that time because they're just feeling so crummy, right? Perimenopause is the time frame between when your, between when your cycles are normal and you can- easily get where you can get pregnant and menopause. So perimenopause are those years, you know, 
you know, it can be, they can be like 10, 13 years of yeah. perimenopause and it can occur anytime you can go into menopause, anytime between 45 and 55, that's typical. And that perimenopause can be 10, six to 10 to 13 years beforehand, yeah. before you actually go into menopause is considered perimenopause. And what is that? Do and it just feel bad or? Yeah, I mean, there's there's just, the, the, this, the hormones are not as regular and consistent, right? So what happens a lot in perimenopause is during those years, women will have what are called anovulatory cycles. Hmm. So, so they don't ovulate every time they have a monthly cycle, Period, right. right? And so those anovulatory cycles, meaning no ovulation that month, results in less progesterone being produced in the body. Because when so, you ovulate, that's when you make progesterone. Right. And if you're sort of weaning down your years of reproductive life, you don't necessarily make progesterone, you don't ovulate you don't every ovulate time. every cycle. And then you get these high levels of estrogen, right. and that causes a lot of these symptoms of right, clots and heavy bleeding and bad yep. PMS and mood issues and sleep issues and migraines and all this right. stuff that women suffer from that is so unnecessary. Right, you think of it as, you know, when you're having regular cycles with ovulation, you have estrogen and progesterone and they sort of balance each other out. And then when you're in those perimenopausal years, you're gonna have, so many women will have cycles where they don't have that progesterone spike. Yeah. So it feels like their body feels like it's higher in estrogen because they don't have that progesterone to balance it off. And so you feel <clears throat> like you have high estrogen um, and and like you mentioned, you get more breast tenderness or more clotting or heavier bleeding. Um, and, and the low progesterone makes us often feel crummy. Yeah. So you can be more irritable. You can just you know, cranky, uh, cranky <laughs> harder time sleeping because yeah. progesterone really is a calming hormone and it helps us, helps women, helps people sleep better. Yeah. So when it's low, many times you don't sleep as well. You'll have mm -hmm. irregular sleep ha patterns where you've never had that before. Yeah. And, um, and, and, uh, you just feel more irritable and cranky and, and, um, and it's no out fun. Out of balance. Yeah. Yeah. Out of balance. And, and, you know, it's, um, it's important to sort of understand that we know a lot about what causes these imbalances mm -hmm. and we know a lot about how to fix them except your traditional doctor is just not doing it right? yeah yeah so what are the things that we know create hormone imbalance that make things worse for women and and by the way you know just to sort of a little aside you know it's not just sex hormones that get out of balance right and when you when you see this sort of period of life around perimenopause there's like four different hormones that are all interacting that all kind of gets screwed up. One is insulin and blood sugar. Yep. Because you're, you know, you're often in the sandwich generation. You're, you have kids and your parents are getting older and you're trying to have a career. And it's like, it's a lot going on at that time for women often. Yep. And then they have uh, estrogen imbalances and progesterone. They have adrenal imbalances yeah. uh, because their adrenal glands are their stress response and they're highly stressed yep. in that time of life. So their adrenals interact with the sex hormones and screw that up. And then of course you got thyroid thrown in there in a lot of cases. So you got thyroid, adrenal, sex hormones, yeah. insulin, and so it's like a big mishmash of hormone chaos. Yep. And actually you can fix it. Absolutely. And I'm and so these are glad like so easy to fix with functional medicine. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up because all of our hormones are interrelated. They're all playing off each other. They're all influencing each other. And so that's important to really understand because because that's how we can really help women feel better. Yeah. So when you really focus on the adrenal glands, for example, so you have you have two adrenal glands typically, they sit up on top of your kidneys, and those glands produce cortisol and they produce DHEA and they a bunch that's of other stress things. Hormones. Yeah. So cortisol is one of your stress hormones. So when you're under mm -hmm. a lot of stress, if you're under chronic stress, for example, I mean you you know, your body's gonna be producing a lot of cortisol all the time. And so what can happen, what can happen is then the body is spending all this time making cortisol to handle that, that chronic stress you're under, you're dealing with your, your kids and then your parents as you talked about, you know, you're, job, you're working all the time, your, your job, you're not, <laughs> you're not giving your body enough time to rest, you're not getting enough sleep, you might not be eating right, you know, you might be just running from one thing to the other. It may not be taking the time to do your meditation or your exercise, right? You're just not doing that self-care, which is so important for your adrenal glands. And when that's when that's happening, then then your body's spending all this time producing cortisol. 
that it can't do as good a job at producing progesterone. Yeah. Right? Right. And so and then you like have... A, it's like a chicken wired thing. It's all connected. It's not like they're yep. all separate. Right. And so then you have more of those signs of low progesterone, which we talked about before, which is irregular sleep, irritability, you know, more crankiness, more PMS, right? So um, so it's really important that we step back and say, okay, how can we support your adrenal glands? And, and that's really a lot of of self-care, you know, by saying, okay, I need to give my time, myself time to rest. I need to give myself enough time to sleep. Meditate, you know? maybe. Medi- exactly. Exercise. I got to get my meditation in, right? And um, and I think that makes a big difference. It can really help um, with with balancing the hormones. We know, right, that even simple meditation, fifteen minutes twice a day can cut back on, can significantly cut in half the amount of hot flashes a woman has during those perimenopause. We haven't even talked about hot flashes yet, right? Well, I mean, let's talk about the things that screw up your hormones, right? Yeah. So sugar. Yes. That causes insulin resistance, that causes yep. more estrogen to be made and all the imbalances, right? Right, right. We were talking about how yeah. when you when you get more insulin resistance, you gain more weight around the belly, yep. right? And we know that when we gain more weight around the belly, we, that we have more of that aromatase enzyme, which makes more estrogen and again, throws us out of balance. <clears throat> and what about alcohol? Yeah, alcohol, alcohol really is a concern because the, because the way alcohol... And there's multiple ways that alcohol can impact risk of, of, of breast cancer, for example, but it also seems to result in a higher level of free estrogen in the yeah, body. Yeah. And so, you know, and it, it, we know it disrupts sleep. It, it's a right? liver toxin. Yeah. And it, it literally impedes the body's ability to metabolize estrogen. Yep. And I've seen studies that was shocking to me where people were on hormone replacement and drinking and their liver just can't handle it and the estrogen levels spike yep. and their risk goes up. So yep. we have you know enormous link there. Even like I remember a study I read years ago, which was if a woman had a glass of wine a day, it increases her risk of breast cancer by forty percent. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, there's a linear relationship between alcohol and breast cancer risk. So for every drink a woman drinks per day, like every time she increases the amount of she drinks per day, her risk of breast cancer goes up even further. So you know what's considered moderation for women is five or less drinks a week. With a drink being, you know, five ounces of wine or, you know, an One ounce, ounce of, of hard liquor. Yeah. yeah. It's but, not but very much. <laughs> no, it's not very much. And that's a all beer. for a whole week. But what's interesting is you're right. There has been even studies showing that even even one drink a day is linked with an increased risk mm-hmm. of breast cancer. And and maybe because it, it is impairing, well, par- partly because it's impairing our liver and our ability to detoxify and it's shifting estrogen levels and it also depletes the body of B vitamins. So there's so many, so many impacts that alcohol has there yeah and even even the microbiome plays a role in your hormone balance right right absolutely so right and that's something we're always measuring right we're looking at how the body is metabolizing hormones and um and and we're looking at the microbiome um and i think that that's important when we're dealing with a woman in perimenopause like sometimes they're they just don't even understand why am i feeling this way you know why am i all of a sudden more irritable why am i having a harder time with my periods you know why are they heavier why can't i sleep why am i getting hot flashes now right and so sometimes just educating them is a great first place to start and a lot of times women just feel better when they start to understand okay this is this is gonna you know my hormones are shifting Mm. and then what can i do to support them yeah hi everyone it's dr mark hyman so two quick things number one thanks so much for listening to this week's podcast it really means a lot to me if you love the podcast i'd really appreciate you sharing with your friends and family Second, I want to tell you about a brand new newsletter I started called Mark's Picks. Every week, I'm going to send out a list of a few things that I've been using to take my own health to the next level. This could be books, podcasts, research that I found, supplement recommendations, recipes, or even gadgets. I use a few of those. And if you'd like to get access to this free weekly list, all you have to do is visit drhyman.com forward slash picks. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks. I'll only email you once a week, I promise, and I'll never send you anything else besides my own recommendations. So just go to drhyman.com forward slash picks, that's P-I-C-K-S, to sign up free today. 
and and we were talking about how great meditation is, right? So because powerful. it's oh yeah. Yeah, and then the things you know we see typically the women who have the worst problems have the worst diet, the most mm-hmm. stress. They drink too much. They don't exercise. They don't. They have they have lots of stress. They don't meditate. It's not rocket science. Why hormones get screwed up? Right. And and we know how to intervene using. Uh, very specific diagnostic tests that we do at the Ultra Wellness Center to actually help map out what's happening with the hormones. We can look at estrogen metabolism. We can yep. see how to really be sophisticated in manipulating those hormones so that actually they, they're better. We can fix the gut and the microbiome. We can look for environmental toxins, which act like estrogens in the body, and get rid of those or heavy metals. And we can actually have an impact through using various foods to help, whether mm-hmm. it's flax seeds or other yep. broccoli family, help estrogen metabolism, certain soy products that yep. are, you know, whole food soy products are good. And and then we can kind of um, get people's hormones to kind of work better. We may want to even yeah. use nutrients. And you were talking about sulforaphane, yep. which is a powerful broccoli chemical that you can take. And there's a whole cocktail of things we use to help estrogen metabolism. We should probably talk about soy a little bit because honestly, this is probably the most common question I <laughs> yeah, get yeah, yeah. because people are so confused yes, about well, soy tell us, and like, Dr. Bowen, what oh is my the deal goodness, with soy? should we eat soy or not eat soy? Um, so, so f- soy, right? Soy foods are in. They have these things called phytoestrogens in them, and this is what got everybody nervous, right? Yeah. So they have these. They have these these components, these phytonutrients, these components in them that can actually impact the estrogen receptor. And so for, you know, a bunch of years ago, uh, oncologists used to say, oh no, it can impact the estrogen receptor. I don't want you to eat soy. But what we know actually mm. is that they, they bind to the estrogen receptor preventing your own estrogen from binding yeah. to the estrogen receptor. And as a result, you have a lower estrogen-like impact in the body. Yes, yes. And so multiple studies have shown that that soy is actually associated with a lower rate of breast cancer. Yes. And, but and if a it's lower traditional rate, soy, uh, that's a good point. Like tofu, tempeh, yes. natto, miso, soy Edamame, sauce. Edamame, right? Right. Those are yep. whole soy products that yep. are not industrial food and most soy we're eating today is industrial soy yes turned in all kinds of weird ingredients like soy burgers and yep. and soy hot dogs and texturized vegetable protein that gets inserted yep. in all kinds of protein bars uh and yep. isolated soy protein which is very different than regular whole soy and it may be linked to cancer in right. animal studies right. so i think it's important for people to realize that you know it's it's um you know food is a, a modulator and it usually helps the body do what it does rather than interfere with it and so sometimes it's true with like you eat too much broccoli or whatever you eat raw broccoli you're gonna affect your thyroid but the 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 phytoestrogens in soy actually help to act more like a thermos they keep things balanced right Mm -hmm. and and i think uh you know recommending those whole soy foods is great and i think that's a really easy thing to do flax seeds also really help down flax seeds in the gut yep the broccoli family vegetables simple dietary things and getting more fiber to help the prebiotics in the gut getting rid of all the starch the sugar the processed food all those ingredients alcohol there's really simple things you can do yeah like balancing your blood sugar balancing your blood sugar by making sure that every meal has a good source of healthy fat has a good source of fiber and has a good source of protein right Mm. so that prevents the spikes in blood sugar and the spikes in insulin, right? So you, you make sure your meals are balanced like that, then you won't get those ups and downs in your in your energy. And so you just feel better. And that helps with that helps with all, you know, preventing those that high insulin, which and then, then you're gonna be binging on carbs and sugar to get your energy up and all that. Right, right, right. right. So then that helps with the balance of all the hormones as you were mentioning earlier. Yeah. And um and so, you know, when a woman is going through perimenopause, you know, the first place we look at is, okay, what are these personalized lifestyle factors? What can we really focus on with them? I mean, there might be times where we at the Ultra Wellness Center may use some hormones to help with their their sleep if necessary. Um, But many times just a woman understanding what's going on and then making some shifts in their lifestyle can make a huge impact and make them feel better. Yeah, and and so you had this patient who had you know, struggled with sleep and she was 45 and she had never had a problem before and woke up all the time and had night sweats and she was terribly uh, not well. Um, and, and what did you find with her? 
Right. So, you know, we found, so she was 45. So she was in perimenopause. We checked her hormones at day 20 in her cycle. Mm. So what we ended up finding was her progesterone was low, right? So she had, she was in those anovulatory cycles, like we had mentioned earlier, and, and her progesterone was low. So what we really worked on was supporting her, um, her progesterone production with supporting her adrenal gland, you know, taking good self-care, getting good rest, doing her meditation. Meditation. Mm. We also worked on metabolizing her estrogen. So she had some variations in her genetics and she um, ended up having some, uh, we worked to really lower her estrogen levels with, with, with you know, the cruciferous vegetables, folate rich foods. We added in some supplements that actually on top of that were helpful. And, you know, she did much better. She really started to feel better. And we also, you know, we got her off of we got her off of caffeine because we know that caffeine can yeah. impact sleep more. And it might not have bothered her in the past, but during this transition in her life, it was really impacting her sleep and her irritability. So we got her off of the caffeine and we also saw when we did that, her hot flashes significantly yeah. decreased and her sleep started to improve. Yeah, and you so, just see so many of these patients who suffer with things like PMS, perimenopause or sleep issues or mood issues or depression or migraines which are common when your hormones out of balance right or or abnormal pap tests or we call dysfunctional uterine bleeding which you have clots and uh, painful periods and I you know it makes me really angry when I see these patients because they're not getting the advice they need they're not yeah. actually given a doorway into a way of thinking and diagnosis and treatment that actually fixes their problems yep and they're either told they're you know you know emotional or they're anxious or they give them an antidepressant or they give them a hormone treatment which mm -hmm. you know sometimes is okay but uh, a lot of times it's it's not the right hormones it's you know giving them mm -hmm. a birth control pill or giving them premarin and 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 what we see in functional medicine is by working in this way you know, using the thyroid approach and the adrenal treatments yeah. and the insulin approach that you know fixing the insulin yeah. resistance and fixing the estrogen metabolism and the yeah. gut and the toxins you know it's it's, an, it's different for every woman but you sort yeah. of look at what's for them the issue and you then personalize it and you can create an incredible roadmap for women to feel good and get rid of pms and get rid of heavy bleeding and get rid of the cramps and get rid of migraines and get rid of the sleep and hot flash issues and yeah. so forth right yeah, so it's, it's a pretty exciting model that uh, I think is, you know, it's one of the best applications of functional medicine is helping women with all these hormone imbalances that uh, yeah. are actually relatively easy to fix. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. It's really fun. It's a fun place to be. Yeah, and I, I remember this one patient I had who had abnormal pap tests because you know that's a big thing for women, right? Yes. Pre uh, cervical cancer and screening, and you know what they do is they they screen you and then they then they say, well, you know, come back if it's worse, and mm -hmm. then they cut your cervix out or they do some surgical thing, they burn it or, you mm -hmm. know, and that has consequences and, you know, may save your life, but it's not necessarily the only thing you can do. Right. And I had, you know, one woman very, very interestingly, she had uh, really abnormal pap test, but when I checked her, she had these weird genes that made it hard for her to metabolize estrogen, the methylation yep. genes, the things that have to do with B vitamins. Yep. And she also had uh, some nutritional deficiencies and various things. We just we just fixed it up, and then we gave her we gave her methylfolate, and we yep. gave her various nutrients, B six, which helps estrogen metabolism, yep. and we also gave her something called indole three carbonyl, which essentially is broccoli pill. <laughs> yep. And there's a lot of research on how if you have an abnormal pap test, if you take these phytochemicals that yep. help estrogen metabolism, you actually have a reversal. And I can't tell you how many patients I've had with using this yes. to actually help them get their... Um, like 3,000 yeah. micrograms of yeah. methylfolate. Again, yeah. the, want the methyl form, but 3,000 micrograms of methylfolate really can be helpful mm -hmm. in terms of reversing that cervical yeah. dysplasia, right? Right. right. And, um, and of course, we always go with food and like the folate rich foods are your foliage, your green leafy veggies. Um, but, but when there's actual dysplasia in the cervix, when we give that higher dose of methylfolate, um, that it can, it's, it really can ha be very helpful. So powerful. And there's so many things like, you know, we talked a little bit earlier and maybe we need to do another podcast on this, but fertility is such an issue. Right. One in seven couples are infertile. Uh, it's increasing and it has to do with things that are often treatable or reversible, not using yep. tons of hormones or intrigue or fertilization or all these yep. things. And, you know, I've had so many patients in my practice who couldn't get pregnant. Right. 
and you treat them using a functional medicine approach. And they, get, I can just think of two right now. One's a 44 year old woman mm-hmm. who actually was so sick with all kinds of issues, wanted to have another baby, couldn't get pregnant, and got pregnant naturally after we fixed fixed her. Another one was about a 38 year old woman who also struggled with infertility, yep. and she literally just had her baby last week. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's so gratifying to me to see that that you know we can actually focus on how to treat these things using food. Yep. Uh, there's whole textbooks written on this and fertility diet written by Walter Willett, which talks about how sugar is a big factor for infertility. Huge. You know, and people don't realize that they're eating bread, they're eating sugar and they think, oh, it's fine, but actually maybe a cause of their infertility. So but that whole connection with that high insulin and your hormones and it's so connected. So I, if anybody's listening out there as a woman, there's probably a few out there. (laughs) I would, I would really not accept the traditional messaging from conventional doctors that you just have to suffer through all this. Yeah. Uh, at PMS, again, is one of those things that's relatively easy to fix using this functional medicine approach. Yeah. Whether we use uh, you know, diet, exercise, supplements, various kinds of herbs, nutrients, even sometimes you know, natural hormones like progesterone can make a huge difference. Yeah. And if we do use hormones, we actually use bioidentical hormones, which yes. things like Premarin is horse urine, pregnant mare's urine, yep. and it produces all these secondary metabolites and more likely to give stroke and cancer. Increases and inflammation, inflammation in the body. Inflammation, increases C-reactive protein. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. not great. Mm-hmm. And and by using a different approach, using bioidentical hormones delivered through the skin or certain ways, can have a profound benefit to women. And, and um, I think we're gonna have to come back and do another podcast on menopause because we didn't even talk about hormone replacement therapy, which right. is a whole big category of, of, of thinking about how do you actually find the right dose in the right person in the right way is delivered in the right method that actually has the most benefit because there are risks to it but but i think we can mitigate those risks using this whole approach absolutely i agree so what do you think as a woman about uh, any last words to women and what what they should think about when it comes to their hormones and being out of balance yeah i mean i think really appreciate the connection with all the different with all the different hormones in the body that you know when you really work to support your your adrenal gland when you really work to manage your stress when you really work to get enough sleep and rest in your body that really helps with your hormones rebalancing mm-hmm. themselves and i think that i think that that's a really important area that you know so often women are just taking care of others, right? They're taking care of their kids, they're taking care of their spouse, they're ca- taking care of their parents, and they really need to, to take this time to say, okay, maybe maybe some of these symptoms are telling me that I've gotta start taking care of myself. Yeah. And and that really can make a huge difference. Sort of like uh, on the airplane, they tell you to put the mask on your face before you put it on your yep. kids. You know, I think yep. that's what women need to, and it's hard because women are programmed in our culture to be caretakers, to yep. help everybody else, to neglect themselves, and feel guilty and bad if they do it. And I. And I think it's really important that men women start to put themselves first and actually prioritize their own well-being, which will help everything in their life. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Boham, Liz, thank you so much for being on The Doctor's Pharmacy. I, I really love having you on this little mini episode we're doing regularly uh, called House Call. that helps guide people on what to do. People want to learn more about hormone imbalance, what tests they should do, the kinds of therapies that are effective. There's a free information on the website, drhyman.com forward slash UWC. And you can go there and download it. And, and it's a great guide. You can come see us at the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts. You can try to find a functional medicine doctor in your area. But I, I encourage you not to just suffer through the misery of hormone imbalance because we have a way to figure it out. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. That's it for this week's house call. If you enjoyed this mini episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy, share with your friends and family on social media. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you next time on The Doctor's Pharmacy. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark.